Welcome to Get Data Back for NTFS. In this tutorial, we're going to scan an image for data recovery that we created with RAID Reconstructor. You can follow this tutorial for any image created by any of our software except for Drive Image XML. An image is exactly the same thing as a hard drive, except it is in a file format. There are no difference between scanning an image and scanning a hard drive. They will both contain the same information and be the same size. There are a few different reasons why you would use an image. If the drive is failing, you should make an image of it as soon as possible because running a recovery software like a Databack may cause more physical damage or may cause the drive to stop working altogether. You may also have an image if you've run RAID Reconstructor and used an image as an output source as we have done here. Here is the welcome screen of Get Data Back. There is a lot of information here that you should read through if you have not done so. You can find information about data recovery including the fact that you should never install the software on a drive that you need to recover data from. This will only destroy your data and make it unrecoverable with any software. Next we have do's and don'ts. These include, again, not installing the software on a drive that you need to recover data from. You would be surprised at how often this happens. The last option on this side includes our contact and support information. We do not all speak German in this office, so when you do call, be sure to ask for someone who speaks German if that is what you're looking for. Now you can choose the different recovery options depending on what happened to the drive. Default settings is what you should start with if you do not know exactly what happened. Systematic file system damage is for a formatted drive. Sustained file system damage is if you have reinstalled a new operating system and are trying to recover the data from underneath of it. And the last option is to recover deleted files. These selections decide what options will be chosen for you. You can see all the options by clicking on Tools and then Options. Do not change any of these manually as they will be chosen automatically by what you select for the type of recovery you want to do. For this recovery, we will select Use Default Settings. Once you have selected this option, click Next. A drive scan window will pop up and show you the drives it is making available for the software. This window may go by quickly or linger depending on the type of drive you have or how many drives you have. You are now in step one. From here you can choose which physical drive you want to scan. We have an image so we will not choose a physical drive. You can then choose between image files, arrangement files, or remote physical drives. Whenever you select a drive, the details about the drive appear in the bottom portion of that window. We're going to scan an image, so select Load More next to the Image Files option. It will bring up a window where you can choose where your image file is located. If your image is not located in the window that opens, then browse the drive for your image file, highlight it, and select Open. You can now see that the image file is viewable under Image File Options. You can also see all of the drive details, including the name of the image and the size of it. There are additional options on the right side including partial scan. Do not do this unless someone from our support team tells you to. If you choose anything here that you should not choose, you may end up with a partial recovery or a recovery that has no data at all. The See Current Option window shows you the options that are currently selected. Do not change these here as they are predetermined by the Scenario window in the Welcome screen. We are now prepared to go to the next step which is scanning the drive. During this step, the software is finding all the files on the drive by their signature. A signature is a unique sequence of hex characters that every file has. There is a website called filext.com that will tell you the hex signature of certain extensions. 424D indicates a picture file of some type. You can find much more through their website. The time it takes to proceed past this step depends on how large your drive is and where it is stored. If the drive is external or the image is stored in an external drive, it may take several hours to complete. If the drive is an internal drive of over 200 gigs or more, then it may take a few hours to complete. The drive in this case was very small, only 8 gigabytes, so you can see how fast it is proceeding. What we are looking for in this scan is MFT entries. If this stays at zero, then there is no data on this drive that is NTFS and you should run the FAT version. You should have around 10,000 to 50,000 MFT entries depending on how much data was on the drive. Since this scan was for tutorial purposes, there are only 1,000 MFT entries. You should hopefully have one master file table represented by the dollar sign MFT. If you do not, then you're looking at a lost file recovery. This means the files will not have their original names or directory structures. Once the scan finishes, you will be taken directly to step two.
Step 2 shows you the file systems that were found during the scan and information about those file systems. By default, you're shown the recommended file system for the recovery. You may have one of these or a few of these depending on what was written to the drive. You should generally choose the top option in the found file system list. The file system details tell you what file system was found, where the cluster zero was found, what the cluster size is, the total sectors of the drive, where the first MFT record was found, where the mirror of the first MFT cluster was found, the MFT record size, the index buffer size, the total number of clusters, the minimum and maximum clusters used, the MFT origin, and the creation of the MFT. This is generally the day that you formatted the drive, the number of data matches, and debug info. For more information on the NTFS file system, go to www.digit-life.com forward slash articles forward slash NTFS. Once you've chosen the correct file system, click Next. The next step goes very quickly for us as we had very little data to recover. This step generally takes about a tenth of the time it took to scan the drive. You will see a box where the software is extracting the found MFTs, extracting the index entry list, and then populating the tree. In plain English, it is taking the data it found while scanning the drive and making it into a directory structure for you. At this point, as long as the file system is not damaged, you should be able to see the directory structure of your data. You can browse the directories. Open anything that you normally can open by double-clicking on it. This includes JPEGs, movies, music, and office or text documents. Browse through the structure and open some files to be sure that your data is good. Seeing the file names does not always mean it is recoverable. You must open files to be sure you have recoverable data. When you open your files, if they open with weird characters, that means something has happened to the data. Either it has been overwritten or damaged in some way. This is not a function of the demo version of the software. Be sure to open more than one picture or whatever it is that you're looking for. Open at least 20 files, and if you can, open 50 files. The more you see open, the better a chance it is that you have of an excellent recovery. As you can see, all of these files are opening without any problem. If a box appears that says no preview, that indicates that there's a problem with the file and it cannot be recovered, either because something was not chosen correctly in the recovery, or the file itself is damaged. If everything worked correctly, you will now need to purchase the software to copy the data from the recovery tree if you have not done so already. You can purchase the software by going to our website at runtime.org, clicking on the Purchase button on the top menu. Once you have your key, click on Help, then Register to find the place to enter your registration name and license key. Once you do this, you're ready to copy. You do not need to rescan the drive or restart the software. If you try to copy the data without a license key, you will get an error telling you that you must purchase the software in order to recover the data. You can tell the software is not registered by looking in the bottom left hand corner. If you have not registered it, it will say Unlicensed Evaluation Copy. Once you enter your registration information into the software, that dialog will disappear as you can see here. We are now ready to copy the data. You can copy a file, folder, subfolder, or the entire recovery. If you want to recover a single file, select the file, right click on it, and say copy. A dialog box will pop up asking you where you want to copy the data to. Make sure you never copy your data back to the drive you are recovering from. It will destroy all of the data. If you want to select one folder, then highlight the folder, right click on it, and press copy. This will take longer than a single file because you have many files and the time it takes to finish this scan depends on how much data you have in a folder. Here we have a handful of JPEGs so it goes very fast. To copy the entire recovery, select the very top folder in the recovery tree. In this case it's NTFS. It could be FAT16, FAT12, or FAT32 as well, depending on what type of recovery you have done. Right click and say copy and it will copy all the data to a folder called NTFS in the destination that you have selected. Once it is finished, verify your data has been copied and is working and then you're done. You may close the software. Be sure to try our free backup program Drive Image XML so that you do not have to repeat this scenario again. We have a tutorial for that as well. If you have any questions about what you've seen or any comments, please email support at runtime.org. Remember to never install the software on a drive you need to recover data from and never copy the data to the drive that you are recovering from.